Hi, everyone. I'm glad you've joined us for our parent orientation for first reconciliation at St. Charles Borromeo Parish. Uh, the rite of reconciliation reminds us and invites us to experience the continuing forgiveness of God and the mutual support of one another. Each year, our parish introduces our young children to the sacrament of reconciliation. Having experienced forgiveness from you and one another in your households um, and your daily uh, living, now they have the opportunity to experience the loving forgiveness of God in this particular sacrament, which is actually one of my favorite sacraments because the whole thing is based on uh, love. And it's one of my favorite things. I'm a very Hallmark kind of girl. <laughs> anyway, um, it's based on love, you know, uh, and the love uh, uh, that it takes to forgive one another. Um, so, and truly, if we all can get really good at this, forgiving each other and loving each other, <clears throat> you live a much more peaceful life. It takes a lot to be angry at someone and to continue that anger um, throughout your life. Uh, so sometimes, even if you're right, it's just easier and, well, it's not easier, but it is better to just forgive and forget and move forward. You just have that overwhelming sense of peace when, when you're able to do that. Um, so if we can be role models for our kids and they can learn that in their lives, they will live a much happier, more peaceful life. At this meeting, we're going to um, look at the Together in Jesus materials, your purple folders. Uh, the CCD families have been using that for a while. Um, and the St. Charles School uh, families will be um, utilizing those materials very shortly. Um, so we're going to go over that. We're going to identify your at-home parent responsibilities in this program, um, discuss a little bit of uh, the theology behind the sacrament, and identify what to expect of children how to, and how to make them procedurally be able to go with ease and peace and confidence so that they're, uh, they can enjoy the whole experience and not be worried. Okay, so let's begin uh, with the prayer. And actually the prayer that um, I would like to use is uh, in your parent reconciliation handbook, which is in your purple folders. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of forgiveness, as we prepare for the sacrament of reconciliation, help us to better understand how we can live your love more faithfully and more fully. Give us the strength, Lord, and the courage to carry out your will. May we be thankful for all that we have been given and show it through the reflection of how we can better serve you each day. Please hear these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, so, Father Rogers, Father Ryan, the teachers, myself, um, I'm Joanne O'Hara Drummond, for those who don't know me. Um, I'm the religious ed coordinator. Mrs. Yarger, she's the principal at St. Charles. Um, the second grade teachers and any of the catechists and really you because you're the catechist for your kids at this point with the uh, pandemic so uh, you've been commissioned and honestly you're doing a great job so keep it up so we're all working together really to help these kids be able to celebrate their sacraments um, <clears throat> in this pandemic year, it's it's a difficult task to do, but I think that, I think the kids are doing well and we're, we're all coming together and doing a great job. Um, you know, I know you, you're probably tired of me saying it, but you are, are the kids' primary teachers. I mean, they're, you're their first experience of love, really, um, and God, 
you know, God is love. <laughs> so you're their first experience because otherwise it's a little abstract for them. You know, it is, it's abstract for some of us. So um, God uh, is love. And that's why we're, we're teaching them to love him with all their heart, soul, and mind and to love others as, you know, they uh, treat others as they treat themselves, you know, or as they would want to be treated. So um, that's what I, uh, you know, that's what I'm saying to you is, you know, keep practicing those things at home. You know, beyond these materials and things that you're doing, just show them, you know, show them you love them, that you love each other, that you forgive each other. If you make a mistake, tell them, I made a mistake. You know, I thought that was you that made that mess, but um, I apologize for getting angry at you that, you know, I shouldn't have flown off the handle. You know, ex explain to them so that they can see, you know, we all make mistakes. Nobody's perfect but God. <clears throat> so, you know, what you do, they will do. You know, I do a, a baptismal prep class with, with new parents and um, not to put any pressure on them, but I explain to them that the kids are going to do exactly what you do. Um, and to this day, yeah, I went to a Catholic school for 12 years. I went to St. Ed's and Ursuline. Um, and, uh, you know, my, my family, it's a, it's a pretty big Catholic family. And, you know, we said prayers at, at um, meal times. We had to be together at meals. We, we prayed at night before we went to bed. And honestly, my dad, <laughs> there were five of us, uh, which was a really small family in, in my day. I'm getting up there. So, uh, but I mean, I had classmates who had, you know, there were 12 kids, nine kids, seven kids, you know, we were kind of a, an average uh, family at that, at that time, as far as a uh, amount of kids went. Um, but my dad would come in every night and uh, he put a little cross on our foreheads and he would say, angels watch over you, you know, throughout the night. And he'd say, angels watch over you, honey. Um, and when my dad, um, was 80, he had a stroke and he um, ended up in a wheelchair. And I, uh, my husband and I took care of my dad and um, his one side was paralyzed. So every night when I would go in, um, I would put a little cross on his forehead and I'd say, angels watch over you, dad. And he would take his good hand and he'd make me lean down and he'd still put that cross on me and he'd say, angels watch over you too, honey. So, um, till the day he died, he was 90, you know, so um, that, or when an ambulance goes by, I don't even know who these people are, and I'm, you know, I cross myself, I'll be in the car, I'll cross myself, bless myself, and I'll say a little prayer for those people and their family that, that they um, do well. Uh, you know, kids do what you do. You know, we, we had blessings, we had the advent wreath, you know, we did all of those things. And so now I do all of those things um, and they will do. So if you're comfortable with prayer, they're going to be comfortable with prayer. If you go to um, confession, they will go, you know, if you are forgiving, they will be forgiving. If you have strong core values, they will do that too. I mean, we all make mistakes, but we, we strive to do the best that we can, or really you wouldn't be here trying to do all of this. So, um, we're here together to help each other to accomplish those goals. Um, let's talk about the things that are in your purple folder. Okay. This is together in Jesus, first reconciliation materials. Okay. So in there, you will find uh, the lessons. There are six lessons and there are some parent guidelines that are in there too. Um, if you are a CCD family, and really the St. Charles families are more than welcome to uh, utilize the information also. I teach the units each week, and then they come out on Wednesday, and then they just stay on the St. Charles website. So you go to St. Charles Parish, go over to Religious Education, hit that, it'll drop down to CCD, click on that, <clears throat> and you will see um, Together in Jesus material music, if you want to um, incorporate music into your lessons, um, 
there are extra videos if you'd like to to utilize those uh, but then there are lessons you know I apologize in advance for my acting skills I am not good at this whole uh, zooming thing but anyway um, they're on there if you would like to use them uh, and then the, these lessons you'll have your uh, workbooks and the lessons that go with it and then there's a page in there that uh, tells you how to uh, supplement those if you would like to do that um, there is also if you want to see how your how your son or daughter is um, remembering and, and retaining that information like a short five question quiz that's based on that lesson that day so you can see you know did they really get what i was doing so that's what's in there also you will have um, stickers that go along with the lessons and they will peel these off and and uh, place them throughout their their lessons and there's another, it's a poster that you want to put like on your refrigerator or someplace central where everybody goes. And um, there are activities that you do throughout the week that reinforce what you taught that week. So for example, the first lesson is based on I belong to a loving community. So you teach the lesson if you want to utilize those other materials, you know where to find them. If not, you can always call me. I'm at the Religious Education Office, 330-758-8063. Um, and then you go back, like this first one. The activity that reinforces I belong to a loving community. Love in a home is not measured by the elaborateness of the gifts or the once a year birthday celebrations or the things that you have. It's clearly shown by the way parents, children, and, and siblings interact with, with each other every day. So that's your community. That's your, you know, your close knit family. Sometimes children need a little help in deciding what words or actions make a home filled with love. So you ask the following questions. Is our home love filled when we share things or when we're selfish? When we tell someone not to play with us or to join with us? When we yell at another person or when we use kind words? Then ask your children to check the appropriate heart on the poster whenever he or she performs a loving deed throughout the week. So the first says I shared and then there's enough, you know, for seven hearts, you can fill one in for each time that they did that that day. Uh, the next thing I used kind words with others in my family, or I offered to help someone, or I did chores without complaining about them. So there are some things that they can be thinking about. And then sometimes they might do it and didn't even think that they, you know, they didn't even think about it, which that's the goal for sure, right? But um, if they do something and you notice that they didn't fill it in, you could say, you know, Johnny, I saw you do that with your sister. You gave her that um, toy because she's just little and she was crying because she wanted it, even though it was yours. That was a hard thing to do. And you did a great job with that. So you need to, don't forget to fill that in on your poster, you know? So that this you utilize and it, there's an activity each week for you to do to, that reinforces what you've taught that week. Another material is, this is really kind of neat. There are frequently asked questions and the answers that follow. So that when the kids ask you those questions, you have something at, the, at your fingertips that you can talk about and answering if you don't already have that answer. It's just a, a quick go-to for you to um, answer any of those questions, okay? Alrighty, I did throw in, um, in addition, I threw in, there's a role-playing activity that you can use. This will be really a good idea for you to do. Um, and I would do it many times so that they can practice. In this role-playing activity, um, you are the uh, priest and they are the confessor. And the directions are in this letter. 
but basically it asks you to get a box or, or a bag and put on their reconciliation box or reconciliation bag. And then I just typed up some, a few um, second grade sins, <laughs> venial sins, but anyway, second grade sins really, what do they do? That's all that bad. But anyway, we have a few second grade sins. You cut them out, you put them into the bag. Okay, then you sit across from your son or daughter and you say to them, well, you talk to them about um, examining their conscience and, you know, you're going to be doing this um, as you work through your program, uh, the six lessons, because the six lessons talk about um, belonging to a community and it goes over the Ten Commandments and it talks about how the first three are about God and how you love him with all your heart, soul, and mind. And the next seven commandments talk about how we treat others because the greatest commandment is how we love God and then, you know, treat others as we want to be treated. And that's how this last seven commandments are, you know, so it talks about all of those things. So then you, you know, go over reviewing their conscience before they go into confession. And, um, you want to be able to let them know, okay, well, those are God's commandments. So, you know, you're going to ask yourself questions. You know, do I obey my parents? Did I disrespect the name of God? Did I use it when I was angry or something of that nature? Have I complained about going to mass? Uh, have I kept God in mind and prayed about, pray, prayed with him and for him and about him? Have I lied to anyone? Did I take anything that didn't belong to me? And so on and so forth. Those give you, you know, if you ask yourself some of those questions and the Ten Commandments kind of give you some guidelines, then um, they know what they're going to talk about, you know, what happened and what they're going to talk about when they go to confession or reconciliation or penance. They learn that those are the three things they're, that it's called, that sacrament can be called. Um, reconciliation, because it brings us back. It reconciles us with God and the community. Um, and the love that he has for us and we have for each other and him and him. Um, it's also called penance because the priest gives you a penance or something. That means you do something that says, yeah, I am really sorry about that. I'm not just saying I'm sorry, but I really am. So you, you do or get a penance and you fulfill that um, penance. Uh, and it's called uh, confession because you confess or you tell your sins to the priest. So they learn those three things. And um, there is an act of contrition that you want to practice. And I would suggest that you do that like well, nightly. If you do nightly prayers, have them say that prayer instead because they already know the Our Father, the Hail Mary, the Glory Be. We've been doing those for a few years. So um, <clears throat> just have them do this one or um, in the morning when they wake up. But if you have them do that daily, it's called the act of contrition. And you know, there are many different um, versions of prayers of the act of contrition, but the one that we will be using is in, in your parent, uh, first reconciliation parent handbook. And it's also in this, um, role-playing thing that they do. And you can, you can even cut it out or write it in. So they have a little, you know, cheat sheet that they can take with them, uh, so that they are not worried about making a mistake or, you know, and everything they say, as long as they're saying it, it doesn't have to be the exact words. If they forget a word or whatever, it's still okay. So this act of contrition is, my God, I am sorry for all my sins with all my heart. In choosing to do wrong, because they learn through this program that sin means that I did it, but I knew it was wrong, but I did it anyway. I didn't care about what God wanted or what my parents wanted or anybody. I freely chose to do that wrong thing. So that's a sin. If they do something that they really didn't know was wrong, that's a mistake. Then they've learned. Now the next time they do it, <laughs> that's a sin. But the first time, no. Like if they were running through the house and bumped the table and a, you know your favorite vase got broken, um, it's not really a sin. It was an accident, right? They didn't come over because they were angry. Take your favorite vase and crash it on the ground. And they're going to ask you a lot about sins and about like, was that a sin? Did I, well, you say to them, well, did you know it was wrong and you did it anyway? That's a sin, you know? And 
they have to learn how to be honest with themselves. So that's why you're, you're cutting out these fake sins because they don't want to tell you what their real sins are. They're going to think they're going to get in trouble. Okay. So we give them fake sins that they can practice with so that, that when they go to the priest, because they learn the seal of confession, that that priest is not allowed to tell anybody what he or she, she told him. So, um, so that's going to be sealed. You know, they, they know that that's a worry-free zone, but they might not think so much about that with you. So we practice with pretend sins. Okay. So my God, I am sorry for all my sins with all my heart in choosing to do wrong and failing to do good. I have sinned against you whom I love above all things. I firmly intend with your help to do penance, to sin no more and to avoid whatever leads me to sin. Amen. So that's the version that we will be using. That's what you want to continue to practice. Okay. So <clears throat> after you take, after they examine their conscience, so that night, you want to have them ready with about two or three of their sins. Like tell them, you know, I, I, I want you to be thinking about two or three things that you're going to be talking to the priest about. So when they go in, they already know what they're going to be saying. They're not sitting there going, mm -hmm. um, 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 you know, the more they're prepared, the more confident they are going to be and the more at ease and the better experience that they'll have. So this is what you can do to have that happen. Okay, so um, then on the back of those uh, fake sins, uh, you're, that's what your role playing is. And it says you sit across from each other and um, you are the priest and then he or she will come up. So that night, what's going to happen is... Um, you will walk your son or daughter to the priest when it's time. Like I'll be there, I'll pull people out. It'll all be color coded. So like Father Rogers might be green. All the kids that go to him will be green. There'll be a green bow in the pews that Father Rogers has. Or, you know, Father Ryan might be purple and so on and so forth. So that's how that will happen. So you'll know where to sit and where you're going. And then when it's your turn, um, the usher, which would probably be me or somebody, you know, like me, Mrs. Yarger, um, will notify you. And then you'll walk up. You're going to keep your six feet distance, socially distance. And you'll say, Father, this is Johnny Drummond or whoever it is. Okay. I just used his name because that's what came to me. And um, your son or daughter, you introduce them. Then you step back with the usher or myself or whoever you're with <clears throat> to give your child privacy. Then they will walk up, they'll sit down and um, father will say hello and they will look him in the eyes and they will say, bless me father for I have sinned. This is my first confession. So you want to keep practicing that. Bless me father for I have sinned. This is my first confession. Now, obviously after the first confession, what they'll say is, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It has been two weeks since my last confession, or two months, or two years, or I can't remember how long it's been since my last confession. But it's not their first. Okay, so you use some other time frame. If you know it, if you don't, you just say, I don't remember how long it's been. Um, and then they proceed to tell the priest their sins. You know, whatever it is that they... You know, I lied to my parents. Um, I got angry with my brother and sister and, you know, I hit them. Uh, I, I, I didn't have a pencil and I stole my, my classmate's pencil or whatever it is. That won't happen this year because they're not in class, at, at least at CCD. It might be at, at school. But anyway, that's what they'll do. And then Father will talk to them. Well, why do you think... Um, you lost your temper that much to hit your sister, you know, and then he might give them, you know, maybe next time you want to say a little Hail Mary or an Our Father in the, in the interim so that you don't, um, you have some time to cool down before you approach your brother or sister when you're that angry. Uh, he might tell them, you know, he'll talk to them a little bit. And then he'll say, when you go back to your, you know, seat, I want to, I want you to say three Hail Marys or whatever it is he did. So when they're all done confessing their sins, and here's the other thing, tell your son or daughter, when you're done, 
look at the priest and say, um, you know, these, I, I am sorry for these sins and, and all my sins, or I'm sorry for these and all the sins I can't remember, you know, or, you know, I'm really sorry and, and I'm finished, Father. You know, give him some kind of idea that you're all done because he's not going to move them along if he thinks they're just sitting there. He wants them to be comfortable. So he will just say, he'll just wait for them. And if they're just sitting there, not saying anything, you know, so they have to say when they're done, they have to say, you know, I'm sorry for these and all the sins I can't remember, or I'm sorry for these sins and uh, I'm finished, Father. But he, they have to say they're sorry and pretty much <clears throat> that they're done. And then when that happens, <clears throat> he will put their hand over, his hand over their head. And he will say, I absolve you from all these sins in the name of the Father. And so they have to bless themselves <coughs> bless themselves while he's saying, so I absolve you from your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then he'll say to them, you know, go back to your pew or to your, with your parents and say three Hail Marys. And then remember to say a little Our Father before you, you know, get that angry again. Just gives you time to cool down or whatever it is he tells them to do. Now, the directions say to shake their hand and say, I'm sorry. I mean, I, I mean to say uh, thank you, but you're obviously not going to do that due to COVID. But you will explain to them in normal circumstances, you know, when they're face to face like that, he, could, he might shake their hand or just wave, thank you, Father. And that's what they'll do. Thank you, Father. And, um, you know, say goodbye. Then you'll go back with your parents. You'll return to your seat. You'll kneel down and and say your do the penance that that you are asked the penance means you know that you're you're doing an action that says you're really sorry you're not just saying i'm sorry you're doing something to say you're sorry and um and then you're going to wait until the rest of the class gets finished okay the rest of the students so i suggest you know that they pray these kids are old enough now they don't need cheerios and toys and all that i mean and that's what we have to tell them. You know, you're getting older now. You're experiencing the sacraments. You don't need all those little things. You you are a model to your brothers and sisters that now you're older and you know what to do. So you're going to say a prayer that maybe the rest of your class does really well and that they have a really good experience. Or you can pray for your family or whatever it is. You know, you can thank God for all your blessings. There's a lot you can do um, to thank him for. So you remain quiet in your seat until we're all all finished. So that's how the procedure goes throughout the evening, okay? And that, again, is in your um, materials in that handbook, okay? Another fun thing I did, well, I think it's fun. Maybe for the kids, they think it's fun, but it's um, a 28-day countdown. So uh, at this point, reconciliation is on January 27th. Uh, so you're going to count 28 days backwards, and then it's just a quick little thing that they can do each of those days to keep it the forefront in their mind that, oh, I'm making my sacrament. I'm celebrating this sacrament of reconciliation. So like the first one is pray the Lord's Prayer. That only takes a minute. Day two, ask a trusted adult about his or her first reconciliation. So you might want to look at these just in case <laughs> you do these so that you're prepared. Um, day three, pray the, pray the Hail Mary. Day four, uh, fast from playing one of your favorite toys, like something that you normally do. You know, don't, don't play, you know, Xbox that day or whatever, you know, because you're giving up, you're, you know, you're doing something for God. So anyway, there's just a little something, something that you can do each day to, again, prepare for the Sacrament of Reconciliation as we move forward. Okay, um, and then some of the last things that you have in your folders is, this is the last thing that you might have in your folder and it's your parent handbook. And um, as you go through your parent handbook, um, it talks about what happens at reconciliation, a lot of the things that I just covered, you know, how the ceremony will be, um, 
procedurally uh, happening, uh, important future dates, you know, which obviously are all subject to change, and um, making your first sacrament of reconciliation, all of the things that we just talked about. So anything that you might need, plus you have my phone number, um, my email is jdrummond at youngstowndiocese.org. Uh, I will always, always help you and answer any questions that you have, provide you with more support. Um, anything I can do, I'm happy to do that. I know Mrs. Yarger is also. Uh, so um, that's pretty much, that's pretty much everything that we need. So let's close our I mean, I can't have any questions from you. So if you have any questions or you need anything, just give me a buzz. Um, if not, good luck, take care. Um, and let's close with, a, with the act of contrition since we practiced that one. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. My God, I am sorry for all my sins with all my heart. In choosing to do wrong and failing to do good, I have sinned against you, whom I love above all things. I firmly intend, with your help, to do penance, to sin no more, to avoid whatever leads me to sin. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good luck to all of you. Please enjoy this experience. Honestly, it's a beautiful sacrament, and uh, the kids are going to feel great. They're going to have a great experience and they're going to feel, you know how you feel when, um, when you've been forgiven or you forgive someone else and everything is reconciled, you just feel that love and you feel like a weight's been lifted off your shoulders. So enjoy, take care. Bye-bye.